Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Bumber here, back today with another episode of The 39. Okay, so I'll go through the spiel quickly as usual. The 39 is a episodic um, series that me and my man Trevor with Double Bill Movies are doing. Dis link in the description below. Um, yeah, so we're going through the 39 Category A Video Nasties, the main bad boys, the Cat One list. Okay, so we're some way through now, even though we're only on F in the alphabet. We've done about... Oh, there's nearly enough 20 films, surely, by now. But, um, you know, I said, still on the Fs. This is Toxic Zombies. So I know, I know what you're thinking straight away. He said F. This begins with T. OK, but this movie is known as Forest of Fear in the UK. It's also got some other um, titles. Bloody Does being the main one. But for this release, it's called Toxic Zombies. OK, so have a quick look at the release. This is the one that both me and Trev got. So this is from Massacre Video. Don't know if you can see the thing there. Okay, so they do uh, quite a few low-budget kind of video nasty type films. There's your special features down the side. This is about £20 online. You can still get it. It's not out of print or sold out or anything. So, um, you know, just go on to Amazon. I got this one off Film Treasures in their sale. But anyway, so it's um, this is 1980 on year, but I think from what I was reading on Wikipedia, it was produced in the in the late 70s, but maybe sat on the shelf for a bit. Um, it's directed by Charles McCran. He also directed wrote and starred in it and the interesting thing about this guy is he died in 9-11 in the Twin Towers so there's an interesting fact for you um so basically then about the film really um it's about these hippie um hippie people and they're up on the mountains trying to crop this marijuana but at the same time um this dodgy government um department are trying to get rid of all the plants so they uh, spray it with this illegal kind of um, toxin uh, with these airplanes and all the hippies get sprayed with it and uh, yeah it turns them into these um, rabid zombies that you see on here okay so um, first thing we do and we jump into Trev's notes first and then I'll go with mine I haven't looked at Trev's yet because I don't like to sort of have my view changed until I do the video but first of all then Trev's going to give an overview and he says this is a cool low budget film Filming started under the name Forest of Fear, but was released as Toxic Zombies in the US because of the success of the Toxic Avenger. So there we are, because Toxic Avenger was um, popular, they tried to sort of um, bait, uh, bait people, clickbait people, um, well, the 80s version of a clickbait to get you to go and watch a zombie movie. Um, uh, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so shot on 16mm and in the 1.66.1 uh, aspect ratio. Um, I love that even though the 35mm blown up elements were scanned to 4K to create the Blu-ray, no restoration was undertaken. Okay, so yeah, it does look really rough. When it, Even from the minute it starts, all the screens are crackly and full of dirt and noise and whatever. So you know where you are straight away with this film, you know, video nasty, uh, late 70s, early 80s, shot on 16mm. Um, it goes on to say, actually, the whole movie is full of scratches, dirt and all sort of other film damage. The sound is full of pops, crackles and other glitches. Well, all of this added to the viewing experience, in my opinion. So, yeah, one thing I realised about Trev is he is a traditionalist. He likes it to be, he likes it looking crusty like it used to in the VHS days. For someone like me who's only finding these video nasties now, you know, I'm getting spoiled with the remastered version. So I've got nothing to compare them to. Um, so, yeah, so this was extra rough to me, you know, like even though I was around in the VHS days and, um, you know, most of the movies I watched still had a certain level of budget back then. So they didn't look so bad. But yeah, for a film that was made in the 1980s, i got to be fair, if I walked in a room, I would have thought this was made in the 60s. It had the same kind of um, aesthetic as um, Blood Feast or the Andy Milligan one we done. Um, I can't think what that's called. That was the blood something one. The ghastly ones. It had another name, the blood something. No, uh, it looked like that really, really cheap and old. Like, But, you know, Testament do it in a certain way. Some people like that. Um, so on to the questions then. Trev says, does it feel like a video nasty? So he's answered, yes, for the most part. But I was waiting for the element that caused it to be a video nasty. Apart from some guts and a fair bit of fake blood, that element didn't really materialise. So it did start with, but not once... The film finished. Um, okay, so basically, then Trev saying there then that um, there was like a checklist or a tick sheet of things to make something a video nasty, like blood on boobs was always 
when there was a no go, you know, you could have blood, you could have boobs in your films, but you couldn't mix the both at the same time and whatever. So, uh, yeah, it's not a lot going on here. The makeup's very cheap. It's just people with some um, reddening under their eyes and, <laughs> and cornflakes stuck to their face, like, but you know, um, they had a super low budget. And for the budget they probably had, they look pretty cool, actually. The zombies is a good scene when they first get sprayed with the pesticide or whatever you want to call it, and they're all coming over the hill. It reminds me of John Cameron does the fog because it's all like powdery the sky like where they've been covered in the thing and they're coming over the hill really slow the brow of the hill like that was pretty cool um anyway i'm waffling a bit there uh so go on then should it be a video nasty uh Trevor says he's not sure attended it yes i can see why it was a video nasty it definitely got that aesthetic but when you deep dive into like the grossness and whatever there's not a lot here really just a couple of rubbish head shots neck shots uh, they love a good rock kill in these films i've noticed there's a rock kill like they're not like zombies like the traditional ones where they just come up to you and eat you they would eat you at the end but they're also quite clever with the weapons like some guy takes a bash him with a brick to the head another guy gets his arm lopped off because they like slowly change into the zombie so it's a bit like the sadness at first they just go a bit mad before they start trying to literally eat everybody around um Okay, so um, I would say in both of these questions, does it feel like a video nasty? I'd say yeah, because of the, the low budget feel and shot on 60 mil and whatever. Should it be a video nasty? Probably not, because not really that gross, really. Um, should modern day horror fans check it out? So Trev's saying yes, although some kill elements are a bit tame. You only really see the aftermath. I think the horror aspects are pretty good with great makeup effects, and it does... And doesn't love a zombie film? Hang on, let me make sure I'm really right. I think the horror aspects are pretty good with great makeup effects. And who doesn't love a zombie film? That's what I'm supposed to say. So he's right, yeah. I mean, there's lots of zombie films. We've all got our favourites, haven't we? Like Shaun of the Dead and um, <coughs> The Crazies or whatever, like World War Z. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of zombie films out there. This being one of the originals. So this started the redneck zombie trend i don't know a lot of films in the redneck zombie trend from the 80s i know this one called redneck zombies that's shot on video though so that might be a bit later but um you know there's a lot of redneck zombies it's like a small subgenre of horror from the 80s i think midnight might be one movie that you can get on sadrin which is pretty good i don't know if i call it a zombie movie though but it's pretty decent um anyway so I would say no, a modern horror fan shouldn't check it out. I didn't think this was very good at all, this film. By about the third way in, I had lost all the world to live. I couldn't wait for it to finish. The plot is so convoluted. It just introduces uh, random characters halfway through the movie for no reason. Like, it's just, you know, it's just a mess. Like, but I appreciate it still, don't get me wrong. Um, and then Travis got a summary then. Basically, I think Forest of Fear is a great film. I really enjoyed it all, be it a little bit slow in places. I found most of the acting to me really good, along with the rest of the production, like cinema photography, the editing and shot composition. Okay, but I didn't think the acting was very good at all, I can't be fair, but then I suppose you get accustomed to it when you watch lots of low-budget movies, so bad acting never puts me off, but it was pretty atrocious in there. There's some boobs in there and whatever else, Sudden, like some random scenes at the start, these two sheriff guys like randomly kill this woman and then uh, these hippies come along and kill them and it's just like all a bit for nothing really um so yeah so there's it's a bit um convoluted but um nah, whatever like it um and then just finishing on with trev so he says i knew i knew i recognized one of the actors it was john amplus who played martin in martin the section three video nasty so there's a guy in this end who's in martin which is the george a romero vampire movie that just came out from second sight recently so um, there we are um he's also in dawn of the dead day of the dead and creep show okay so there's some good knowledge from Trav. then like i said the main guy in this who directed and wrote it as well he actually died in the 9 11 tragedy so that's all a bit mad as well so um Trav goes on to give the film 7 out of 10 um we're gonna have to uh be a little bit apart on this one even though we've agreed mostly lately me and Trav, but i didn't think much of this at all and i would only give this four four out of ten like i said it felt 20 years um earlier than it was and that's not a compliment i gotta be honest but um it does say about that george amplus guy here it says it features george romero's alum john amplus um okay so this was available on this for the first time as well when it came out um, but anyway, I'm at risk of waffling now. So we're coming up to some really good films in this series now. I'm glad this is this is probably the last one of the um, oh, just ones I'm not motivated to watch because I know it's going to be super cheap. The rest of them, they all got some interest to me, like Gestapo's last, last Orgy next. I got that on 88 films. I can't wait to watch that. Then we've got Last House on the left. I Spit on Your Grave, The House on the Edge of the Park. 
Lucio Fulci Zombie, um, Mardi Gras Massacre. There's some top, top films coming that I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into. So on behalf of me and Trev, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Keep it easy.